In this lesson, I'll show you how to approximate the area of a shape using the Simpson's rule. The question reads, a cross section of an airplane wing is shown. Measurements of the height of the wing in centimeters at 20 centimeter intervals are found to be the numbers shown here. Use the Simpson's rule to estimate the area of the wings as cross section. The way I like to approach this problem is to organize my work by writing it out in table form. And before we do that, take a look at the wing. It spans from here to here, which makes up 200 centimeters. So in every 20 centimeter intervals, these numbers were recorded. Let's go ahead and write those down. So we have X and Y, X represents the horizontal, and that starts at zero, and it makes its way to 200. So zero, 20, 40, 60, 80, all the way to 200. Now that we've written these numbers, we can go ahead and write down the heights that correspond to each. So at our first observation, it was 5.8, then 20.3, 26.7, and you keep recording these numbers all the way to 200. There you go. Now be mindful that this step is completely arbitrary. So if you choose not to do it, that's strictly up to you. So let's take a look at the formula for the Simpson's rule. We're told that the area, which is an approximation, is equal to delta x over 3. Let's discuss that. Delta x is calculated by taking b minus a over n. b and a represent the endpoints at the two extremes. So for us, b will be 200 and a will be 0. Let's substitute that. So we have delta x is equal to 200 minus 0 over, and now we have to choose the amount of intervals we want. In theory, the higher the end value that you choose, the more accurate your approximation is. Now for us, since these numbers are separated by intervals of 20, let's count how many subintervals exist. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So let's choose an end value of 10. And remember, n has to be even. And that's a good choice. So 200 minus 0 over 10 is 20. Now that we found 20, we can substitute that into the Simpson's formula. And we'll do our work right underneath. We have the area is approximately equal to 20 over 3, multiply 2. This is in function notation. You might be used to seeing this with y's instead. All this is saying is, what is the y, or the y-coordinate, at our very first observation? And that's 5.8. For the next term within the brackets, we have to multiply the y observation by 4. So 5.8 plus 4 times 20.3. The next one is 2 times, notice that it alternates between 4 and 2 all the way until it reaches the final observation, which is 1. So 2 times this number, 26.7, plus 4 times 29, plus 2 times 27.6, and you keep doing this until you reach the very end. This is what your expression should look like. And finally, once we've reached our final observation, we will add 2.8. So we're not multiplying 2.8 by anything. Keep that in mind, and that's shown in the formula here. Okay, now we have to use our calculator to compute this. And depending on your calculator, you might have to do this in two steps. I'll show you how to do it all in one step because my calculator is capable of that. So 20 divided by 3 that factor multiplied to all of these. 5.8 plus 4 times 20.3 plus 2 times 26.7. And you keep inputting all of this where you should end up with the final answer. OK, so I'm ready to click equals. This gives us an area of 4,121.3 repeating centimeters squared. Let's write that down. Now you should be asking yourself, is this reasonable? I mean, given that this is an airplane wing, the fact that this number is large in magnitude shouldn't be questioned. So it's likely that we did the calculations right. And with that being said, that is how to find the Simpson's rule of an irregular shape 
such as an airplane's wing.